It's time for the Daily. Nailed it. All right, today, flavor build. This flavor build is actually based off of a stat block that comes from in-game called the Hobgoblin Devastator. Now, the Hobgoblin Devastator is like the old school Hobgoblin. It's not this new fancy pants fey Hobgoblin. It is a old murder them all militaristic Hobgoblin, which I tend to kind of prefer, but I'm okay with the new one, whatever. So the Hobgoblin Devastator's flavor is essentially they have a school of devastation. It's the evocation wizard. They kind of have a different underlying philosophy. Instead of understanding where your magic comes from, they just want it to be practical. So basically their philosophy is, does a soldier need to know how to work a forge to swing a sword? No. You don't really need to understand how magic works to throw a fireball. You just need to be able to throw fireballs. I love this idea. I think it's fun and I wanted to do a a build based off of the Hobgoblin Devastator, take its flavor, be a Hobgoblin Devastator, but be part of the party as well. So we're definitely going to be Hobgoblin, and I'm going to be the new Hobgoblin. We're also going to be an evocation wizard. So a lot of the me mechanics are just kind of put forward for us, make it really easy. I wanted to do a restriction with this character. I don't want to have any finesse-based spells. If it doesn't feel like it's directly related to combat, being, you know, destroy them, cripple them, retreat, the basics of combat, mobility is another one, then I don't want it. So things like counterspell or dispel magic, it's like, that you have to understand magic to be able to break down what spell they're casting and to dismantle it. We can't do that. We don't. We have no idea what they're doing. We're just chucking fireballs at them. And I also wanted to combine that restriction with I would force myself if the enemy has a mage. I am a prideful creature. I want to have a one-on-one -on -one with that mage, but I can't cast a spell magic or a counter spell. So basically, the idea is I just have to fireball them to death from far range or whatever I'm doing before they kill me or start dismantling my spells. I really like the flavor. I think it's fun. I think it sounds like a fun character to play. I like the extra restrictions. So let's talk about the mechanics a little bit. I've done a video on hobgoblins. If you want to see that, probably right there. The hobgoblins are excellent if you don't have bonus actions and you want to protect your concentration. So as an evocation wizard, a lot of our blasting spells like fireball aren't concentration, but the hobgoblin does incentivize us to do some blasting with some concentration spells, which is kind of neat. Keep that in mind. But we're also going to, of course, mix in the, the other ones. Combining that with our bonus action, help. Now, this is where, you know, I've talked about this in the Hobgoblin video once again, but our bonus action help gives buffs. However, rules as written says that in order to do the help action to give your allies advantage on a creature, you have to target the enemy. So they actually messed up. This is just frankly a mess up where it's meant to cast the help action on your allies in combat, but rules is written. You actually do it on your enemies. Clearly this was rules as intended. Cast it on the ally you want to have advantage on their next attack. I highly suggest running it that way. I think most DMs are going to get that, but if it doesn't work that way, then you will just literally not use it in combat. So as for the spells we're selecting, I am going to actually look at the stat block of the Devastator first. I'm probably not going to take them all, but I'm going to take the ones I really, really like. So looking at that stat block, we have ourselves Mage Hand and Prestidigitation, two cantrips I'm sure I'll grab, probably along with like a Firebolt. They also get Fireball, Fly, Fog Cloud, Gust of Wind, and Lightning Bolt. Out of those, I'm excited about Fireball, Fly, and Fog Cloud, the three Fs. So we do, as an Evocation Wizard, once we hit level 10, we get the Empowered Evocation, so we can cast some crazy magic missiles or the crazy Still Wind Strike. We have a huge damage output potential. I have a build called the Magic Machine Gun that we did way back in the day. You know, don't judge us too harshly on the old video quality. But yeah, if you want a more in-depth view at the the magic missiles synergy you can go find it there though i will say i did make some mechanical mistakes in that video it happens we are incentivized through hobgoblin to take concentration spells the evocation wizard incentivizes us to take aoe spells because of sculpt spells we can automatically allow our allies to save so we don't need to be fancy pantsy we can just chuck a fireball in the middle of a group and just say hey those allies they automatically save and when they save they don't even take half damage so we don't have to be careful with our fireballs amazing and then over channeled incentivizes us for a fifth level spell and below just really really crazy damage still wind strike is quite good with that one at fourth level i am picking up fate touch i know i know but it's amazing it does incredible things and for us we're going to take hex with it hex really enables us 
does to be a single target blaster along with being a many target blaster. So in some combats we're going to, you know, hex, firebolt, and then next turn start unleashing scorching rays, which is another spell we're going to take to kind of compound that hex damage. I was really considering not allowing myself to take shield or mage armor, but it felt like, you know what, in military that is a very militaristic, straightforward type spell, so I allowed it, but I did hesitate with that one. Fog Cloud is really our retreat, you know, Hobgoblins are team players. We're not just there for ourselves. We're there to sound the retreat, create a fog cloud, get everyone to escape. That's what fog clouds would do with their hobgoblins companions, so we might as well do it with our party. I picked up Vortex Warp as well. I really liked the idea of being able to mobilize my troops. Again, kind of that backline commander type vibe was something I was dipping into with this build. Level 4, I picked up Greater Invisibility. I really liked one having a emergency button to escape with Greater Invisibility. And also I just liked the idea of being invisible checking fireballs. Also cool. I also liked Wall of Fire just because, you know, we're blasters, so that makes sense. Fifth level, I grabbed Cone of Cold. It's a blast. Not my favorite blast, but it's a blast. I grabbed Still Wind Strike because it has great synergy with our 14th level feature. We don't need to take that right away, but eventually, yeah, we're gonna wanna pick that up. I also picked up Telepathic Bond because again, we are the commander. I really like the idea of us being able to distribute orders from the back line telepathically. I also grabbed Transmute Rock. I found that as the more I built this character, the more elementalist it felt. And I thought Transmute Rock was a cool way to bring some earth elemental in it, along with, you know, the Cone of Cold and the Fireball. I just thought that was a nice touch. Going as deep as 6th level, I picked up Disintegrate, as well as Freezing Sphere. I've never even looked at Freezing Sphere until this moment. It's okay, I'm not gonna say it's incredible, it has really long range, it has some cool things where it can just like flash freeze a whole lake, eh, just a big area of the lake. I thought it was kind of neat, never have taken it before so I took it here, but you know, take it with a grain of salt. That was kind of my just initial overview of the spells, but honestly there's a lot of flexibility there. I just thought, you know, we have a good balance between high damage output, being able to hit multiple enemies, or being able to target one one enemy, some defensive options, some team support options, and it all came together with, I think, this really flavorful and cool build. I liked it. Hope you did as well. For then, just the YouTube things like, comment, subscribe, notification button. But most importantly, if you like this video, check out some of our other flavor character builds. We'd love to have you. And now for the promised joke. What do you call a goblin with an injured leg? A hobbling goblin. Have a good one.